Hello again, this is the fifth video on how I use the Digital Photo Professional 4 software. Today it will be about the HDR tool. Most of you know very well what the HDR technique is all about. For those of you who are not that much into photography, HDR stands for High Dynamic Range. But what does it mean in practice? Well, every camera, or rather every optical image capturing device, has its range of highlights and shadows it can capture at one time. That includes also your eyes, and is the reason why you can't quite make out the details of the objects covered in shadows if you're standing in broad daylight. It's very the same reason why you can't see stars during daylight, because sun is the stronger light. Our eyes, however, are not only better at registering the image than cameras, they are also supported by a highly advanced image processing software installed on a quite an impressive mainframe. That, of course, is our brains. Cameras don't have that, and so we need help in shape of histograms and exposure meters to be able to tell whether the image is exposed optimally. If it is not, it will be either overexposed, and some areas of the image will be burned out that is purely white, like, for example, in this picture, where you can see that the roof is uh, too white. Or it will be underexposed and too much of the shadows will be completely black. Like, for example, in here, you can see that a lot of details is lost because um, the picture is too dark. The same story with these two pictures. This one is, well, almost correctly exposed, but some details are lost, and this one is obviously too bright. Here is where the HDR technique comes into play. We can expose two or more pictures, like you can see in here, um, and capture only parts of the image in detail. So, for example, we can make an overexposed photo, uh, to capture the lowlights or shadows, and an underexposed one to capture the highlights. This is called bracketing, and is actually available as a built-in feature in many of the modern cameras. However, once you capture the images, you need some method of combining them. You can do it manually, using uh, software like GIMP or Photoshop, and overlay two pictures and mask the areas which uh, you want to cut out and remain the, pa the parts of the other picture which are correctly exposed. Um, but that requires quite some work with masks, uh, feathers, selection, it requires time and skill. In DPP4 you have that built-in tool which allows you to do that automatically. So now let's see what the Digital Photo Professional 4 can do for us in case of these two pictures. Now let me show you the three pictures here. We have I made a three picture in a standard bracketing um, selection and they are handheld camera so these pictures were made uh, these pictures were made uh, using a handheld camera so no tripod and you can see the picture moves around when I switch through exposures now this is more or less a correct exposure so we have the details uh, in the shadows pre preserved but also the highlights are more or less correct However, uh, just for the test, I also made an underexposed photo and an overexposed one. And they are more or less this, uh, the same um, f-stop away from the middle picture because they were made using the automated bracketing feature um, on my Canon uh, camera. Also, if you look at, for example, these two pictures, you will see the same story, right? This one is tad bit underexposed, this one is overexposed. So what we can do is just select the two pictures that were um, the underexposed one and the overexposed one and simply click Tools and the HDR tool. Or if you're on PC, press Alt and Y. Now, you see these two pictures, you can also add in a third one um, to increase or to, to increase the quality of the outcome. But I'll just use the two ones and see if this is more or less the same as the middle exposure picture uh, I presented earlier. Now I will use the auto align picture because if I do not, let's see what happens. I'm going to start the HDR tool. 
There we go. And what we can see is this kind of picture. Of course, the result is useless here. But if we do, no, we don't want to save it. However, if we do use the HDR tool with the auto align feature, let's see what happens. There we go. Now the picture is um, aligned and you can see it's correct. Now you cannot see really the difference that much at this point, but let me compare that. Let me maybe um, save it or no. We'll first play around. So um, we have a kind of presets available here that we can use. Um, and if I select uh, art standard, which I just have, you will see that the result is well a bit different if I undo that well, I can undo it but yeah um, it can even be overdone with Art Vivid which I personally hate or even embossed like you will see in a moment which is quite terrible although it has its charm I think the worst one is vivid and bold, which is completely useless. But let's go back to natural one. And the good part about the HDR thingy is that we can bump up the contrast practically all the way up without really the, having the consequences. Because um, the white part of it, the, the, the bright parts, are taken from the darker picture and the darker ones are taken from the uh, brighter picture. We can also bump up the saturation quite a bit. And also, um, this uh, detail enhancement is kind of the grain tool, how much, how grainy the, the picture is. Now, you have to be really careful with this one, because it's very, very easy to overdo. Uh, and let's just reduce the contrast for a moment and the saturation as well. And the brightness, just a tad bit. There we go. Now, if I bump up the strength of the detail enhancement, you will see it attacks your eyes with this um, kind of like a embossed effect, right? We already seen. But we can reduce this, and we can also increase the smoothness. And that has quite a nice uh, positive effect. The fineness is also kind of like a grain effect, um, but a bit different than original, and it's much more subtle than uh, than the detail enhancement um, uh, strength in the front. So I'm gonna reduce the fineness because I don't need it as, as much. I'm gonna increase the saturation just a bit and the contrast just a bit. There we go. Uh, and also the picture looks too grainy, so maybe I'll reduce the strength of the and fineness of the detail enhancement. And there we go. So let's save it. Now, unfortunately, with the HDR tool, you can only save um, as a JPEG or a TIFF image. Basically, you cannot save it to the CR2 file uh, anymore. But I'll save it as a tutorial HDR and it's saving now okay so let's compare the two pictures we've already seen with the the ones I have prepared previously and now. So this is the dark picture. Oh, let, hold on. Let me also include the sort of correct exposure. So this is the, the, the middle exposure I chose. This is the bracket, lower bracket. This is the higher bracket. And we assume we have two pictures which are over and under, underexposed and we want to salvage them and have more or less this effect. So with the picture I made just now, you can see that because of the auto alignment, um, the picture had to be cropped a bit. But that's obviously expected because you can see they are not 100% uh, overlaid uh, and 
that's why the auto align had to crop it, but it did a good job um, of it. Now you can see that the colors here are more vivid, so that's probably the saturation in play. And in the picture we just created, it's uh, much brighter. But still, you can see, unlike in here, in the overexposed picture, uh, you can see that the details on the roof are much clearer than um, in the overexposed photo. You can see those dark spots, which sometimes, of course, you would like to avoid, um, but it's not the point here. The point here is we want to get all the details without uh, losing uh, without losing other areas of the picture. So this is what the HDR tool would produce in this case. Now, there is something to um, be wary of. Let's, for example, choose two other pictures, like these two. Uh, this is a picture of, uh, well, you can see for yourself, more or less. This is on my on the way to my work. And I would like to present that you cannot always use the HDR tool or its limitation uh, within the with the context of the outer line. So the outer line has its limitation, and you will see in a moment what kind of limitations it is. There we go, you see? Although the, the center of the image is very well aligned, uh, the edges are not. That's because the tilt of the camera was different uh, in both pictures, um, and it was also moved a bit, so the frame was moved. Therefore, when you are trying to make an HDR photo, you at least need to make sure that your level of the camera is exactly the same. So you, you cannot make pictures from two different angles while you're while on the move, for example, because that will change the parallax uh, of, the, of both pictures and the outer line will not be able uh, to cope with that. Also, uh, so you cannot move hor uh, horizontally, but also the tilt of your camera has to be um, the same. So it has to be level, basically, or at least at the same angle for both pictures. Uh, if you do that, if you do take pictures from both, um, for, if you take both pictures from the same place and with the same tilt of the camera, the auto align should be able to compensate for any hand movement that uh, um, has happened during uh, or while you were taking both pictures. So we can play around with this one. You can see the effect is quite nice because uh, the highlights are there. Uh, and still the inner of the temp sort of small temple is, is still uh, well lit and you can play around with the brightness to, to obtain a huge effect. But we're going to dump it because of these um, edges, unless of course you were interested in just part of the picture, like this one, um, then you could crop it, but that's not why we made the HDR photo. We wanted to capture all these details in the bushes, which are being lit by the sunlight, and also um, the inner shadow. So that's it. Uh, this was just a quick uh, introduction to the HDR tool. I hope uh, you found it useful and uh, bye.